Hello and welcome to a special edition of Up and Running with Luminar 4, um, presented by Photofocus.com. Now, our, ho our special presenter today is a sports and action sports photographer from Quebec, and she's also a Scalum ambassador. Please welcome Michelle Grenier. Hello, Michelle. Hi. Hi, Vanilli. Hi, everyone. Really excited to see you today. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we have people coming in, and we apologize for such a late start. Now, Michelle is going to go over uh, getting started with Luminar 4, and it's going to give you quick tips on if you're new to Luminar, how to get up and running, and if you already know Luminar, some of the tricks that she uses to make her sports and action photos just look absolutely amazing. All right, Michelle, you have the floor. Good, I'm ready. I'm going to share my screen like this. Just tell me if you're seeing my screen right now. Yep, perfect. It's Thank working, great. So if it's the first time you're opening Luminar 4, this is what it's going to look like. And you won't have any images yet on uh, your desktop. So this is the standalone version that I opened. I want to show you because you have like different ways to work with Luminar 4. And if you already have a, a workflow, let's say with um, Photoshop or Lightroom, you can easily incorporate this in, uh, as a plugin. So for example, right here, uh, we are in Photoshop and I did, uh, I have an image here that I want to edit. And I want to give you my first tip is um, copy the, your background layer and create um, convert to small object. So this will allow you to be able to edit again uh, your image once it's, it's all said and done. So you can always change the settings. And once you are on your um, smart filter object, you just go to filter and then into Luminar 4 and it's going to open Luminar 4. It's really easy. I want to show this example in the standalone version. So first time you open it, obviously you want to start a work. So how to um, import images, you have different ways. You can, uh, for the single images editing, you can click right here. And let's say I want to add a folder with images. I have my folder right here. I just click add folder and my images are going to come up. It's really easy. Now you'll see that we have all the traditional, the great stuff that's on uh, main, all the editing software. So you have the, you know, the crop tool, which is always useful. And you have different presets on the crop tool. So let's say for example, um, you wanna do um, an Instagram post, then you can just click on the one-on-one, -on -one, the square ratio. It's really fun. You have presets like for 16 by nine, for prints, for everything. And of course you can always enter your custom size uh, for whatever size you're going for that day. You'll also see right here, you have different panels. You have the library panels when you can find all your images. You have the information panel. So you have all the exif of your photos. And we're, go we're going to spend the next 30 minutes or so. The really exciting place is the edit panel. So you'll see right on the top, you have, they call it the light tool. It's basically all the stuff you can see on many different editing software. So you can change the white balance, the temperature, you've got the eye drop tool, uh, the, change the exposure, the, bl the blacks, the whites, the shadows and everything. But what makes Luminar 4 really different is uh, they've incorporated all kinds of really cool AI, artificial intelligence, tools in the software with what makes them really different. So for example, the first one I want to show you is the AI Enhance. And V, please feel free to jump in if you want to add more information because I'm not as a big technician as you are. But basically the AI Enhance tool recognizes what's the scene. So it, it knows right here that there is water there, that there is a rock, and most importantly, that there is a person there and there is skin and a phase there. And with a single slider, you'll see that my, the color saturation 
has been improved, the overall contrast, the exposure has been improved as well. So all I did was to move a single slider instead of doing the basic thing like play with the exposure, play with the highlights and the shadows and everything. So this is pretty much my go-to um, tool when I start to edit an image to have a really nice space. And you know, sometimes I, I just increase just ever so slightly. And sometimes like for this one, a lot goes like it's like perfect. And if I had an image with a, a showing sky, I could also enhance the sky. So this is the first tool I wanted to share with you. The second one is the AI structure tool. So once again, the artificial intelligence recognizes what's on the scene and very important, it also recognizes where if there is skin showing in the image and you will see, it will not touch at all the skin. So usually, you know, with a traditional structure tool, it's going to enhance structure all over the, the picture. And you can see on the before and after, look at the face. Everything else will be enhanced, but not the face. So it will preserve the skin, which is an amazing tool. So for example, I wanna talk about structure. I wanna show you something that really, you're, you're really gonna see the difference. So this is a macro photo I did like a, a couple of weeks ago. And I think by itself, it's really nice. So I will start with a little bit of AI accent. You see right away, like the colors, the contrast, the exposure has been enhanced. And then I will really go crazy on this one so you could see really the difference. So I will play with the amount of the AI structure. And then I will also boost it. Okay, let's go crazy with this one. So this is amazing. I, and I, I'm working on raw files and I have really great, great quality files. So this really helps to get the most uh, details out of my images. You can work, uh, you can edit JPEGs if this is what you prefer to work with, it's working. But if you wanna have those kind of amazing results, I strongly suggest you to shoot in a RAW if, you're in if you intend to um, have a post-production um, part right after. And let's say you, you're really um, picky about the details and you wanna enhance even more details, you can always go into Details Enhancer and independently add small, medium, and large detail, and you can even add sharpen on top of it. <laughs> so look at this, this is amazing. So, okay. This is my, my screen sharing is like on the way to my before and after slider. Wait, no, not this, <laughs> sorry. It's this one. I'm having a hard time not to hit the screen share button, okay. So this is uh, my raw file straight from the camera. And this is the after. It's really, really cool. Then I have an example also for the, um, the structure tool. And I'm gonna go really fast over this image just to show you that it's really, uh, it has a multi-purpose. Multi so if I go back to the AI enhance, I'll do this and then go crazy with the structure and the boost. And it was, sorry, it was an image where it, where it was really raining. And you can see how it looked like. Let me go back to the before. Okay, we'll have it. This is the before and this is the after. So it took me like five seconds to really transform this image and make it has uh, like a really sports grid look. So it's really fast. Another example is um, they have a really cool tool that's been around for, uh, I don't know, maybe a year or, or so. On back to Luminar 3 is the really cool um, AI sky replacement. So 
once again, the artificial intelligence recognizes where's the sky on the scene and will just transform it. So for this example, let's go, <clears throat> let's say I want to add this one. It's going to automatically change the sky. And look at this, it took like five, five seconds. And the best, uh, the best part of this is you can load your custom sky image. So this is even a better option because you know those ones have already been used quite a bit by all the other Luminar 4 users. And to really make an image your own, just take a picture of a sky, whatever, well, I, we're not going to be traveling much <laughs> or we haven't been traveling much uh, for the past weeks, but you can just go for a walk outside, go by the beach and take some really nice sky images uh, at, in the morning or even at night and load them to your Luminar 4 and use them for your own images. Another example I want to show, because this is a pretty easy sky replacement to do because the, the sky is pretty, uh, like, is pretty clean. But what happens if I try to change the sky on this type of image? You have like, it was an um, obstacle run and uh, the, the person has to to go, like to walk around this, um, I don't know how to call this, but you, you see it? The ropes. Uh, the ropes. Of the ropes. Oh, thanks. You. Thank you. And this is really the sky, but it was really gray. So let's say I want to change it for, um, which one do I want to have? Like, let's say this one. And it's going, look, and it looks really cool. And what I really like to do once again, it's to defocus the sky because I don't want to, make it really sharp because in, in a real image that I would take, the sky would never be sharp because I'm always at a wide aperture. So in order to make it fit with my personal style, style I just defocus the sky. And this is what it looks like. And it's really easy. Then- um, Michelle, before, before we go any further, um, yeah. a couple people had a question yeah. about, um, uh, so Mike Wells made the comment, that sometimes the sky replacement tool fails to recognize all skies, only photos with a good deal of sky showing. Um, how have you found that, found that to be? I mean, so what he means that, um, like it doesn't recognize the sky? Yeah, well sometimes, you know, sometimes if it doesn't recognize a horizon, so that, that's the key. Oh. If it doesn't see, like here you got lucky because it was able to see there's a building off to the left and there's, you know, this whole area in the front, but sometimes it won't recognize a sky if it doesn't know that it's the sky. Mm. You see what I mean? So, so I for the mic is yes, sometimes it doesn't recognize it. And that's because there's not enough of the sky to recognize, but here's the best part. We send those in to, to tech to support, tech support. And the neat thing is we reteach the AI. How cool mm -hmm. is that? So the yeah. AI technology, and that's where we have one other question up on top. And please excuse me if I butcher your, your, your name. It's right here. <laughs> Basha, B-O-S-A-H. Basha. Um, he was saying, can we explain why the decision was to move to AI? And that's more of a technical question, not really for you. And I told him I'd answer that. Um, we embrace AI technology because that's the future, number one. And number two, it, like what, what you just did there, Michelle, with replacing the sky, oh my mm -hmm. Lord, that used to take forever if oh, you yeah. manually. But the neat thing about all of our AI tools is they're self-learning. So once we start getting a whole group of Im images that if it doesn't work on certain images, we reteach it. So now for you personally, have you found with your AI, with the sky replacement? Anything? To be, yeah. Go on. Uh, to be completely honest, this is a really cool feature that I don't use as much as I should maybe because I, uh, I'm a sports photographer and I spend like 90% of my time in a gym. <laughs> so I don't have much skies in my images to replace in the first place. <laughs> 
so the the images I did in my personal experience, I've never had this kind of issue. Like this image, <laughs> it worked really, really fine. And I never had an issue. Sometimes um, if I find that it's not exactly at the right place, I can always go back and, and play with like the closed gaps and things like that. And it will help to fix the problem. Gotcha. But I, I never personally ran into this type of issue. So I'm sorry, I can't really answer this, this question. Perfect, okay. Um, and then what I wanted to share with you as well is a really cool um, feature in Luminor 4, which is, has been around also for a while. It's the Sunray, Sunrays tool. And I thought it was pretty much self-explanatory. What is a Sunray and how to use a Sunray? So I wanted to share with you a different tip, something that I use when I'm either like for um, a show or if I'm at night outdoors and there are lights like in the street, I really like this, this tool. So first of all, if you want to see something happen, you have to increase the amount. Otherwise, nothing is going to show. And then you want to place <coughs> the sun center, which our sun is going to be a light in this case, in, you know, a credible place, like straight in the middle of the spot. And then you can increase or de decrease the amount. And the light was really cold. So I will change the, the temperature of the, the light, the sun rays, and then I can randomize it. And look, it just did like, it took two seconds. And if I haven't, if I never told you, I don't think you could have known that I've added this myself and it wasn't taking, taken in, in camera. It's really subtle, but it adds a little something to your images. So this is a great tool that you can use not only for the sun outdoors, Oh, nice. I, li I like how you did that. Yeah, and it took like five seconds. And I say best for last. Okay, so this is the new, you can find it right over here. I'm sorry, my, my computer is kind of slow because I'm running different <laughs> things at the same time with the, the live stream. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find the AI skin enhancer and the AI portrait enhancer under the little smiley here, the portrait toolbox. So I will, oh, let's go to 200% so you could see really well. So this is Andrea and say hi to Andrea. We're gonna enhance her skin. So once again, the AI technology recognizes where is the skin in an image and it's kind of doing a high frequency separation without like all the steps in Photoshop. To put, like, don't use it, a tip that I wanna share with you. It don't use it like at 100, it's way too much. Like it's really, it's really, really soft. Unless this is a look you're going for. I personally like to go like between like 30 and 40, like less is more in this case. And less is more, in a lot of situation in editing in general. So you can see how the fine lines are being blurred and it's, it's really natural, but you know, it's just like a nice looking natural look. And another tool right under is the shine removal, which is an, also a new feature. You can see right here, there is a little bit of shine and on the nose. So what you can do if you wanna get rid of that is just use the shine removal tool and you will see, look at this portion and this portion. Okay. It's just evening everything out. It's really nice. And then let's jump into, into the AI portrait enhancer. One of my favorite feature because I never personally photograph with reflector and flashes because I don't want to flash into the athlete's face when they're competing is the face light tool is really useful in post-processing. So you could see, I'll do this. Look at this. It 
Oh, I, isn't that amazing? It, so, I, I'm, I love this one. So the, so, that's like having an assistant with you, shining yeah. a reflector or oh, yeah. a light on the subject. I absolutely love this one. So once again, like this is a little too much <laughs> for me. So just because her hat is uh, like casting a shadow on her eyes and everything, and her shoulders are, you know, lighter than her face, I want to even things out. So I think like this is a good starting point. Like this, sorry, this is processing. So before, I'm going to have it. And I'm sorry, Michelle, just one moment. And you, you know, everyone is asking, yes, this is being recorded, just so you know. And we apologize. The emails didn't get sent out properly. So we, we fixed, fixed that glitch, and we're so glad to have 147 people here. Amazing. So we, we thank you. And people are coming in with lots of questions. I'm answering most of them. And we're, that, that's in the question and answer the Q&A. Um, one, one real quick one, Michelle, is yeah. does this plugin work in Lightroom with a raw file? Um, because that's how Susie does her work. Um, the answer is yes. And there's a way to do that. Um, you would do it from the file menu. So could you just click on the file menu for a moment? On the menu four? Yep. And then from the file, where it says, well, I'm so sorry. You, you don't have Lightroom on. No, I oh, don't. Sorry. Oh, oh, that's fine. So in Lightroom, Susie, you would click on file and then from there export instead of edit with so export instead of edit with and you could use it i mean what's your workflow like michelle do you do you work with i do you show us it depends because when um i'm sorry maybe you're hearing the uh, strange kind of noise i think they've just decided to build the building again this afternoon <laughs> like right now so I apologize if you hear like weird sounds. <laughs> um, my work, so basically because I do sports photography and I come back home with like thousands of images at once, I found that the fastest way for me to import images was going through photo mechanics. So I import my images there and then I do my sorting and everything. And then depending on what I'm going for, if I have to edit a big amount of images, or if I want to pick real, the very best ones, I'll either go, go through uh, Photoshop, Camera Raw, and then do a batch processing with Luminar 4 with a specific look that I will create for this day. Or I will um, import the images just how I did right here, like this, with the, like, let's say, a folder with images or edit single image and import the raw file into Luminar 4 and really tweak it like to my liking completely. Sweet. So it just depends on the amount of pictures I have to edit, edit that day. Awesome. Um, and, uh, but uh, Luminar 4 is, is always a part of my editing. And I found that this was the best tool to help me get my really own pho photographic style. Like yeah. I know someone who looks at my images and it's a great, a uh, compliment that I get is, oh, Misha, I knew it was one of your images because I recognize your style. And Luminar 4 is a big part of how I express my style in, uh, in editing, in my photography. Yeah, and, and that's one thing, Michelle. Like, and you mentioned photo mechanics. Um, the whole sports photographers use photo mechanics because mm -hmm. I could just type in, let's say, FL for Florida, mm -hmm. 22. And all yeah. of a sudden, boom, it'll say uh, number 22, Casey Powell from Florida, um, Florida Launch Attackman. And so and it, th that's the whole purpose of photo mechanics. Yeah. And I, I'm sure you, because you're dealing with um, well, your, your type of people, you're dealing extreme sports. Yeah. They don't have numbers. No, right? no, no. Yeah. So, no. and you don't have their names ahead of time, but that's how photo mechanic is used. And like you said, that's great for organizing. And then your creativity comes from using Luminar. And I yeah. like, hey, could you show us one more image of the sky? Um, because Anonymous <laughs> would like to show you how, how would you load your own sky? And I think you already showed it. Well, let's show it one more time. Oh, yeah. Okay. Once again. So let's go into this one. And by the way, I haven't, I didn't say it. 
oh wait, it's going too low. Um, I didn't say it, but you can find the sky replacement in this little um, palette there called creative. So you just click on it. And you go, uh, sky replacement is right there. So to load your own sky, you go into these presets and you have load custom sky image. Yes. Now, no, what, what, if you click on that for a second, Michelle. Now, what, what, um, what I recommend is inside your photos, your photo um, folder, I have, a, I have another folder up on the very, very top. I put underscore, so it's at the very top, assets. Uh, assets. Yeah. And then under assets, I have my own skies, my textures, um, my own looks. So anything that I have that's extra, I like to keep it there so now I know where to go. Um, I just click mm. on it, boom, there I am. So I'm not searching through hundreds of images. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, but this is a great tip. I, I'm going to use it for myself. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one last one. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the comment was, yeah, so once you load your own sky, does it stay there in the library after it closes? And the answer is yes, it does, but only the very last sky that you wow. custom load. Like here. Yeah, so if you did your own loading of your own custom sky, like, yeah, so it, it'll show, <clears throat> it'll show up in that spot there. And by okay. the way, I just got to notice that because of the little screw up that we had with the email, um, Rich Harrington, our publisher, is going to send out an email to everybody with a little extra goodies. So oh. the 150, wow, Michelle, 157 people. So the 157 and the 652 that were registered you're all going to you're going to receive um, something from Photo Focus as a thank oh. you and our apologies. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, Michelle. So we <laughs> answered those questions. And there's just one more. Yes. Um, where is he? Dave. Let's see. I go to the bottom. Ah, here he is. Dave is the man of the hour. So <laughs> he put. Remember when you go to File Export Luminar, make sure you choose Open Source File, and that will open open in, in the um, camera raw file inside Luminar. So if you're in Lightroom and oh, you want to open up a raw file, that's the way to go. Okay. All right. So I'm good. sorry, guys. I don't have Lightroom, so I couldn't show you in how it's working in Lightroom. I'm sorry. No problem. And uh, let's go back to our uh, portrait editing. We're almost done. So we've got her face light. And I think I forgot in the very first place to do the AI enhance. No, I haven't. So let's just do it right now. That's my favorite tool. Oh yeah, it's just, it's a no brainer. I just use it. I know the picture is gonna look better like instantly. Like one second, it's done. And I also uh, do structure, always. So let's go back to our portrait enhancer. So we did the face light so you can Remember, it's like having uh, our own flash added in, po in post-production. So it evens out like, you know, the, the exposure with our shoulders and everything. And uh, I love the eye enhancer. And I'm generous on this one. On the other ones, I like to use it like less is more, but with this one, just look at how her eyes just came to life right now. So I will show you like the before and after. It's amazing. It's just rendering right now. So this is a before and after. Look at her wow. eyes. This is amazing. <laughs> and I like to use this one before using the eye whitening because I feel like the eye enhancer does a little bit of eye whitening. And sometimes I just, this is the only one I need to use. And then I can go back and add a little bit of eye whitening if I want to after. And then we can help for the dark circles. We can improve eyebrows, which is really nice. And the teeth whitening is really cool as well. So it recognizes on your, on your picture, where are the teeth? And it improves like the, the color and uh, like they just look clearer. Can I say clearer? I'll say it. <laughs> So once again, we'll go before and after. Let me see. 
my old uh, MacBook is having a hard time with the, um, the, oh, we got it. Okay, before and after. So it's really, really simple. And I saved best for last. So just before showing my last image, do you have one other question, uh, Vanilli, that people asked? Or? Um, yeah, so, okay, so uh, Ken, back to the sky. Everyone's yeah. loving, loving the sky. Yes, Ken, <laughs> sometimes what happens, Ken, is on your skies, um, if, especially reflections of water, it's gonna, it's gonna emulate what the sky would do to the water. So what you could do is, <coughs> is use the edit so you have it right there, Michelle, right? Oh, sorry. Sky, right? So just click on the edit mask. Yep. So if they click on the edit mask from here, you can either use a brush or a gradient on the water to lessen, to lessen the um, reflection. Here, there's no water, so you're fine. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so you say you can either paint the sky in or paint out, you know, if you erased what you don't want. So that was one question. The other one was, um, and I'm going to tell Ken, email me at Benelli at Um The imagery, he, he has an issue with one of the images. When he tries to export it to JPEG, it doesn't work. And I'll just tell him to email me that image. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I do, one thing I want to say, Michelle, is if you notice, you can't add a new adjustment layer and then add a new sky on that adjustment layer. Mm -hmm. It has yeah. to be on the base layer. If you apply a stamp layer, which merges all the layers, then you can apply a new sky again. So th th those are some of the stipulations on that. All right? Yeah. Um, so we're good there. All right? Okay. Good. All right. We're good there. Sorry. Thanks, Michelle. Great. Okay. Are you ready, people? I say best for last. Okay. So you've seen like what I did with Adrian and all this great AI portrait enhancing stuff. So let's see how it works when you've got a lot of people in a single image. And oh, I yeah. think uh, maybe I was drunk when I took this picture. <laughs> Let me just um, like crop it, rotate it. So it's <laughs> it looks uh, like they won't like fall on the right side of the image. Okay, I feel better now, sorry. Okay, so let's go back and let's do the same thing. Let's start with AI Enhance to have a, start with a great base. And okay. You, you remember the face light, like the flash that we could kind of add? in post-processing, look at this. The face light recognizes every single face in an image and it's going to be applied on all those, those faces. Although we have, we have nine people there <laughs> and they're all got that personal light. So if it does this with face light, what do you think it does with all those other great tools? It's doing the same thing. So if I apply the eye enhancer, okay, let's, it's a little exaggerated. Eye enhancer, dark circles removal, uh, improve eyebrows, and let's say teeth whitening because I, I'll only use those ones for this purpose. Well, I've just edited nine individual portraits in like six sliders. So all their faces are being enhanced automatically. Wow. And the best part of all of this is once you're done and you're done with your editing, you save your look. Let's say I wanna say I've got, I've got a bunch of them right here. You save your look, let's call it, uh, I don't know, uh, group um, sweat club because that was the name of the, the gym. So this uh, look right here can be used in a batch processing. So let's say I've, I've taken like, I don't know, 10 images 
for their website. And I want them to look like with the same, um, I want them to look consistent for the website. I save this look, I go into batch processing and then I, I'll select like the images I want to edit, which I won't do right now, but you get the idea. And then you pick the sweat club group look and it's going to be applied to each and every single image. So the AI technology, and I, uh, please we just help me just try to explain this on the right way, but the AI technology would work in your batch processing for every single image. So it's going to have a different exactly. output for every single image. So can exactly. you imagine for me as a sports photographer, I would never, ever, ever take the time to retouch a portrait of an athlete for 500 pictures, never. But with the batch processing, I just throw in like skin enhancer and face light and everything, and it's going to be applied to exactly. every image I'm going to deliver and, to my and client. The, and, and I see what you're heading with that, um, Michelle. Is, yeah. So let's say you, you, you get like, what you're setting out right now, what number? What what do you say? For your let's say skin enhancement, what was your setting? I think uh, I haven't wait. Why isn't it working? Oh, okay. Well, you you even said the sky. Even if you have the um, I'm sorry, the uh, the fa the the face lighting. Yeah. What number do you have that set at? Let's say. Forty. Forty. Okay. So what it's going to do is it's going to analyze the next image, and see how much up to forty it needs. Mm. You see what I mean? So yeah. so. And same thing with the skin softening. You know, if you set it up to let's say 30, it's gonna analyze the images and apply that amount up to that amount that if it needs it or not. Now, whether it needs it, if it doesn't need it, it doesn't apply. Just like you could apply um, a sky replacement, but if there's no sky in the image, it won't it won't add it. So that's why the, the AI is so cool because it's you know for the for the portrait stuff, it's human aware. Somebody was asking, uh, is it just on humans or can they use it on pets? I tried it on pets, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as of now, <clears throat> and some of my pictures of me, I guess you know, I'm not human. No, I'm joking, it worked. I'm just saying, <laughs> um, some of the images, if it doesn't recognize a human face, it doesn't apply it. So that, that's why I think it's so cool. That's, that's why it's so neat to put it into batch processing because it's not like if, if you were to use the traditional light tool and you say, okay, I, I want my black point to be minus four. Well, if the, if the next image doesn't need minus four, it doesn't matter. It makes it minus four. Whereas a, AI technology says, hey, I know you said you wanted minus four. This image doesn't need it. And it bypasses it. Yeah. So that, that's, that's so cool. Yeah, it's really helped me on my workflow and delivering faster uh, images to my client and just better looking images because I would never touch the skin of my athletes. And now they, they look good and also they have a great skin and I didn't do like, they don't know. I just like moved the slider and everything's been taken care of by itself. <laughs> and Michelle, um, do you have a couple more to show us? Or, I have one. So they're asking about our um, the, cube, the, the code for those of you who are interested in, in getting it today, um, we do have a very special, I'm going to pull it up in one moment, and we, we do have a very special just for you. So Michelle, can I borrow the screen for a moment? Yeah, of course. Stop share. Wait, stop yep. share. Got it. So just for this webinar, you can see this, Michelle, it says save an extra yeah. $20 hmm. on Luminar 4 and get our free bundles of extras. So go to photofocus.com tips forward slash luminar four photofocus.tips forward slash <clears throat> luminar four and you'll be able to get twenty dollars off plus get a whole bunch of bundles with that and while we're here let me there we go oh, michelle we're celebrating mm. 21 years of photofocus so you were like a little kid I wasn't really old. I was, uh, what? Uh, I was fourteen when it started. Fourteen when you. 
So, and what's, what's neat about this, Michelle, is let me share one other screen is, um, and you're, you're part of this group too. Let me, oh, it's up on top. I, by the way, I moved my share screen up on top. So, because I know you have issues with it being on the bottom. So let me share my screen. Here we go. All right. So right now you should be seeing we're celebrating mm -hmm. free gifts. Yeah. You see that? Yep. Awesome. All right. So here's what's really neat. Just for signing up. So you go to photofocus.com uh, forward slash celebrate. And just for signing up, putting your email in, you're going to get over like $300 worth of photo tools, including five eBooks, 81 lookup table, which are LUTs, mm, 94 yeah. Photoshop layer styles, 20 creative profiles for Lightroom and Photoshop, and 54 textures, plus two full-length video courses. So that's just for signing up. And then <laughs> our monthly drawings. Remember, Michelle, when we were in Las Vegas for our writer's yeah. retreat? Yeah. Remember, we were talking about our 21st birthday, and we were laughing because it's our birthday, but we're giving the gifts to everybody else. Yeah. And some of the gifts that people have been receiving, um, you know, has been from exposure, gift set, x-ray calibrator system. Mm -hmm. there, there's so many incredible and really expensive gifts. <laughs> because we're part of PhotoFocus, we're not eligible. <laughs> and, nah. and there's a what? Right, Michelle? Yeah. So, and then everyone is entered into the grand prize and that's with over $3,000 worth of gear, including a mirrorless camera, mm. valued at $3,000. Um, and look at all the cool, incredible um, stuff. So yeah. that's, again, just for being part of photo, a member of Photo Focus, and we love having you as our readers. And let me do one more, Michelle. Um, let me get back to, let's see. I, believe it was the screen. Oh, I see you. There we go. Uh, I think you're seeing the aviator. Yep. yep. Okay, there we go. So that's celebrating. And oh, here we go right here. So once again, um, just go to photofocus.tips forward slash luminar four, and you'll receive $20 off plus a bunch of goodies. So you can check that out. All right. And that expires. <clears throat> It says June 6th. What's the date today? It's uh, 4th. So it's for okay. 48 and hours. I'm pretty sure, and I'm pretty sure that's going to get extended because of our slight little um, <laughs> mix-up earlier on <laughs> how emails were being kept inside Zoom. So once again, we apologize. And everyone's going to be receiving um, another email with our apologies. And Rich Harrington just mentioned to me we're going to be sending out some nice little um, gifts to everybody. So, all right, Michelle, how about you take it over again? Yeah. Yep. Well, you want to share me to share my screen? Yep, please. Oh, I got to stop sharing. There we go. All okay. right, Michelle. Okay. Uh, let's go into this one. Well, I've, and I've, by the way, Michelle, you yeah. have the most freaking questions people are asking. So I'm, I'm trying to keep up the best that I can. <laughs> <laughs> we we have 15 in the queue, so keep going. Uh, and then, well, I did pretty much um, I, what I really wanted to show. It's what makes Luminar 4 different and puts them apart and makes me want to really enjoy working with it. It's all the AI, um, uh, AI tools, but they've got like great other tools, like the dramatic one, it's, and it's going to be my little secret between you and I. This is my favorite filter, my favorite tool for a sports grid look. So it basically, it desaturates the image and it increase, uh, increases the contrast. So I will like add maybe like this. And I think V, you like it as well. Uh, so I use it like maybe this amount, but it, I feel like it gives a sports grid look, which I really like. And in this image, I really like uh, to use a vignette as well. And this is a great tip that my friend Abba Shapiro once gave uh, at a conference and that I always kept in mind is how to uh, efficiently apply a vignette. So this is another tip I wanted to share with you okay. is go crazy with the amount, like the maximum amount. So you can really see where the vignette is being applied. 
and then you can change like the settings. Are you sharing your screen, by the way? I I am. Okay. Are people seeing it? Yeah. Is it All working? Right. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. perfect. And uh, let's say I will feather it a little bit, and then maybe like this. And then one, once you know exactly where it's going to be applied, then you add the real amount you want to add. So let's say like this maybe, and I love to throw in a little bit of inner light. It's really subtle. And this is the tip here, be subtle with everything that you do and a little bit adding up in the end is going to make a great difference. So this is the before and this is the after. So if you didn't know, you couldn't know like there is a vignette in there because it's not like a dark circle or a line right here. It's really feathered and you can see how immediately the eye is being drawn in the center to, towards the face of the athlete. So this is uh, the before and this is the after. And it's been really easy and really fast and also really fun. Like everything is it's just like friend, friend, user friendly. If you're a, a professional, you can do really uh, like compl more complicated editing. And if you're just starting, you're, you can basically just you open the software and just try different stuff. And everything is non-destructive. So don't be afraid to play around and try stuff. And you don't know like what this is going to do when you try different things and you you'd either like what it does or not and you just if you don't like it you just turn it off and that's it and your original file will never be touched by anything so you always keep your original file on your folder so it's non-destructive exactly yeah yeah and then that's one thing to point out is that keep in mind when you so we got to we gotta stop using the word import images into Luminar because you're not importing an image. You're importing your image into your computer and mm -hmm. now you're opening it in Luminar. Luminar and just like Lightroom, Luminar is um, storing in a database where the file was located, all the changes you've made to this file, any tags you've made like um, your favorites, star ratings, a color, and uh, like we said, it's all non-destructive. But the cool thing about this is, if you change it, if you change the file name in Luminar, it gets changed on your hard drive. If you change it on your hard drive, it gets changed in Luminar. That's yeah. why Lightroom, people flip out that Lightroom's losing my, my images. Well, Adobe didn't create a program to make you lose your images. It's user <laughs> error. If you're outside of Lightroom and you change the file name, you won't see it inside Lightroom. Inside Luminar, um, the engineers, I, they, they did this and I, I you, know, you and I both do portraits. I love tethering to my computer, tether like features. So when I'm taking photos, it automatically goes to my computer, you know, wirelessly. And then it goes to a, a folder inside Luminar and people can see the images immediately and all my effects. So, all right. It's really cool. Yeah, because I remember when I started, I, I was using um, Lightroom and I kept on wondering like, what, what, where are my images? I, I couldn't understand. So this is really sim simple. If you move your images in your, uh, in your desktop or on your um, hard drive, it's just going to follow it. It's really easy. Gotcha. So I've done pretty much like what I wanted to share with you, I don't know if you have any other questions or anything. Uh, Michelle, but what, what is one of your favorite photos? You personally. One of my favorite photos? Yeah, because I didn't see, well, I know one of mine of yours is the guy with the clap of their hand, the power goes everywhere. Oh yeah. Do I don't have, have uh, I have, I would have, if you give me, if you, if you talk for, oh no, I'm sorry. I, on a different computer? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, well, well, that's, well, that's one of my favorite photos you've taken. Because, and I, I just love, in fact, if you want to stop sharing your screen? Yes. Good. We'll, we'll start to wrap up in a moment. But so when Michelle came to visit um, for like an internship, and the coolest thing was we went to a local 
high school and we did a track and field. And what was really cool was I was exhausted. Remember that, Michelle? Yeah. <laughs> I was so tired. <laughs> and thank God Michelle was there. I was, I didn't know what type of photographer you were at the time. I mean, you were just graduating. Yeah. And after like five or six shots you grabbed, I looked at them and I said, hey, Michelle, I'll tell you what we're going to do. <laughs> I want to sit off to the side. How about you take over? And you had this big grin on your face. <laughs> and the shots that you got were just absolutely amazing. I loved your angle. But what are some of you, why are you so successful? With, with your, what, you're doing something different from most people. Mm, good question. Because I'm really, I think I'm just really passionate about what I do. And I, I've decided it's a, it was been a personal choice and it's been a gamble. But at the beginning of my career, I knew that what I was really interested in was sports photography. So I didn't try to do like everything. I just did what I felt like I really wanted to do. And I think it served me well. So for example, I, I did CrossFit, I did Olympic weightlifting, I was in a surrounding and my community was all sports and athletes and I knew very well the sports I was taking picture of. So it's been really easy for me to know, you know, like the split second you have to take your picture or the angle you have to take to make the athlete look more spectacular. And I, I think all of this combined uh, just helped me like grow and grow my career and get to know more people and do really great stuff. Well, that's awesome. Um, so a few people are asking questions. You want to be drilled down more with AI. Uh, Rich Harrington did an absolute amazing AI assessment and why we're using AI. So again, I'm so sorry for about your name, Brush, Brasha or Brush, B Bosh, B O S H. Um, Send me a link to Vanelli, or send me an email, Vanelli at Skylum.com, and I'll send you that link. All right. Um, one of the things, Michelle, is what what's your type of what's your camera gear that you use for sports? That's a great question. I've I came a long way. I came a long way. I've started doing photography in 2016, so it's been four years. And at the time, I didn't have budget at all. I didn't have any money. And this is where I decided to go back to school. And I was broke. I was just broke. So I bought a secondhand camera, which was already like eight years old, which was an old Nikon D5000, an old crop oh, sensor, wow. a really, really old camera. And uh, I bought it like, I think for 400 bucks. And I had a 2.8 lens that I didn't know what meant to have a 2.8, F2.8 aperture lens, but it really helped me. And I started my career like this. And then I've upgraded and I bought my first full frame camera. And I, because I've learned in Nikon, I stayed in Nikon. So I've bought, uh, I bought a Nikon D750. And then last year, it's been over, it's almost a year and a half now. I've made the big switch to uh, from DSLR to mirrorless. So I bought the Sony A9 um, because my career was growing and now I had the budget to buy like really exactly what I needed to buy. And for me, I felt the best fit was the Sony A9. The autofocus is amazing. The ISO capabilities is amazing. I spend like all of my time in the gym and when I do like a high speed photography, like high uh, shutter speed, you really need to increase that ISO. Uh, so it really helps with this. And this is what I'm using now. So I have a harness. I'm using uh, the Hold Fast Moneymaker harness, I really, which I really love. And I've got two cameras with um, uh, focal fixed, uh, I'm looking for my words. Um, like what? Focal length, like what? No, because you're talking about the, the focal length of the lens? Yeah, but what are you, a prime lens is, okay, I'm prime gonna lenses. have it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm getting tired. Uh, with prime lenses, so usually I have my 55 millimeter F1.8 on one side, and I have my 135 millimeter F1.8 on the other side for my telephoto uh, lens. And, and what are you shooting your, your F-stops usually? Because you, you have a unique, are you shooting wide open at 1.8 or? Are you making them variable? 
Well, I'm paying big bucks to be able to use the F1.8, so I do use it all the time. But and, we got to make sure people understand that's like driving a Ferrari, you know, understanding that 1.4, 1.8, you have to make sure you're really tacked on what yeah. you're focusing on. Otherwise, if you're off slightly, everything looks blurry. Yes. It's tricky. Right? Yes. But this is also why I've invested in a great, uh, in a camera that could do such an amazing autofocus, like it just focuses on the eye and tracks the eye. So I know if in, even if I'm wide open, the F1.8 is going to be sharp on the eye. So I'm, I, I am fine with this. <laughs> great. I'm going to show one more before we end. Um, let me share the screen again. Good. So guys, again, so if you do are looking for Luminar Photofocus, has a special um, save an extra twenty dollars on Luminar mm. Four, and you get all the free bundles of extra that come with it. It's photofocus.com. I'm sorry, photofocus.tips forward slash Luminar Four. And um, if you go to photofocus.com, actually <coughs> make sure you sign up for the We're Turning Twenty One celebration, and it's photofocus.com forward slash celebrate, and you can get a, a ton of tips. And even on Photofocus, which is really cool is if you type in the search bar, Luminar, there's loads of information. Because some of you are asking, where do you find more information? In fact, Michelle, are you still in Luminar? Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Could you open up, I'll let you share it. Yeah, share. This yes. is one of the things I'm extremely proud of inside Luminar. And full disclosure, I am a photo focus author, but I'm also the director of education for Skylum. So that's why I know a lot of these little tips and tricks here. So you're sharing your screen? Yes, I am. Perfect. So for those that are looking for um, extra knowledge, click on help, please. Yep. Look at this right there. There's a whole list of tools you can use help from inside Luminar. Um, there, there's videos, there's a Skylum Academy. Um, one of my absolute favorite. So here we are with the Skylum Academy. Oh, these are tutorials. So um, if you go back to the help one more time, my absolute favorite, Michelle. Oh, sorry, I'm in Safari, okay. Ready? Write down the manual, the user guide. The user guide? Oh, on the, on the top, okay. This right here, Rich Harrington and myself, <laughs> it's been a long time. It was really, so, so Michelle, just type in the tool up on top in the search. Yeah. Let's say um, our favorite tool, Dramatic. Oh, yeah. Dramatic. And now, boom, you have the list of it. And so let's click on Dramatic tool. And not only do you have it, but if you go down a little bit, most of the tools also have videos mm. that are attached to it. Now, Michelle, you're going to love this. We've also designed this for French, German, oh, yeah. Japanese. So the languages... Right now, there's only a couple of them that we have, but all of them are designed to where we can have multiple languages. So I guess I have to learn Japanese now. <laughs> <laughs> Your English is doing very good. <laughs> Thanks. Right, so Michelle, let's stop sharing the screen for a moment. Where can we find out more information about you? Uh, I have my website, so uh, michelgaranierphoto.com. Uh, I also write... I've been reading, writing articles on Photofocus for like three years, so I've got plenty of articles there. You can just look up for my name, Michel Grenier, and uh, you'll find different articles. I wrote about uh, when I did my switch from DSLR to mirrorless. It's been a great series. I wrote a lot of tutorials uh, on how to use uh, Luminar, Luminar 4, and Aurora HDR. And uh, I'm on Instagram. Uh, and then that's on Instagram, they can see your... You're really cool folks. In fact, I, ironically, how you used Instagram was when you came for that visit, it just so happened the Canadian rowing team, the, um, was it the kayak team? Kayak, yeah, canoe yep. kayak. Yep, so they were happy to be here. And within, you know, a quick phone call, we went and saw them and we brought them into the photo studio and you and I did a whole photo shoot of the team. The yeah. unfortunate part is I kind of got close to them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I warned them that when the Americans are competing against them, I have to root for the Americans. <laughs> and it's going to be rough um, because they were such great, great. And, and that's because of your posting on Instagram that they knew you were here and they thought yeah. that was the greatest thing. And 
that was a great opportunity. Yeah. So check out her Instagram. Yeah, and it's another tip. Uh, you can, I've been, people came to me really often, either on Facebook, on Instagram, because they saw my, my account. They're like, hey, Michelle, I'm interested in doing a photo shoot. So this is free. So use it. Show your best images. And you don't know, like, where it can lead you. Exactly. And most importantly, you have to have the hunger and desire. In fact, Michelle, quickly, how did we meet? Uh, at uh, Photo Plus Expo? Photoshop World. Photoshop, Photoshop World. <laughs> like, I, I was in my, uh, doing my um, photography degree, and you were doing a conference on sports photography, like portraits. And you are pretty much the only one with this type of photography. So I really got into like what you were talking about. And I, I think I just came up to you after your conference and we got in touch and we just kept on. Yep, and it was, it was, it was really neat because I joined up in a, the after hours um, staff party and there you are with all the instructors that were giving the event. But the neat thing about it was I saw her desire that she wanted this. And next you know it, um, I got a call like six, seven months later that she's graduating but she needed 75 hours of, what was it, mentorship. Mentorship. Yep, and so she came down. We did a killer mentorship. She started writing all the stuff I was teaching her, and then we used that for Photo Focus, and next thing you know it, we ended up on a plane to Las Vegas for Photo Plus. No, WPPI. Yeah. WPPI, yeah. Yep, and that was when you first got to learn about Luminar, and so yeah. it was kind of neat. But then after that, she opened up her own doors, and your your for... Mike Cabasi always says, it's your character, it, well, it's your skills that get you into the room, but it's your character that keeps you in that room. Mm. And with Michelle, that's that definitely what happened with you. Your, your skills definitely got you through the door. It's her character, her hard work, her attitude that, I mean, now you're a Skylum ambassador. Um, yeah. You've been photographing a ton of stuff. For, that was your dream for the Olympic team. So yeah. to say I'm more than proud is an understatement. Uh, but that's a perfect example of somebody who embraced their passion and just did phenomenal with it. So Michelle, awesome job. Thank you, V. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. <laughs> well, hey guys, thank you so much. We really appreciate you coming in. And once again, we apologize for the little glitch with the email <laughs> system. And um, Rich Harrington is going to, our publisher is making up for it by sending each of you an email and excuse me, adding some goodies. This is being recorded so you can rewatch it again. And I'll check with Rich. Rich was talking about maybe doing a retake. I thought you did phenomenal. Um, so we'll see. We may have Michelle back to do another one, which I think will be really cool. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for being here. I, I, I'm really excited and I hope you're going to enjoy like working around and playing with Luminor 4. Sounds great. Well, hey guys, thank you so much. Well, I'm Vidali with Photo Focus. Thanks for watching.